Today, aquascaping, what are we leaving on the table? Well, we've got the 10 questions that you never thought to ask until just now. This is BRS TV Answers. If you are aquascaping a new tank, want to re-aquascape an old one, or even add to an existing one, these are the questions that today's reefers are asking, and the answers, starting with number one. I ran out of room for coral. I want more. How do I add to my existing aquascape? There's a few options that we would choose, starting with a branch or branch-like structures. You know, Real Reef makes some branches. This stuff is really easy to kind of cantilever in between a couple rocks. And then, you know, it's one that kind of secures itself, but add some glue to support it. Instant uh, real estate for more sticks, more, you know, encrusting corals, things like that. Also, you could build a bridge. You, know, you can build some one of those archways and in between rocks structures and there you have it again more real estate just like that go add some more corals your favorite though I think actually is adding islands uh, uh, anyway. so you can go build out tiny little islands that are out in the sand uh, that have all brand new aquascape you can actually glue a bunch of rubble together <laughs> to create a, like a little porous habitat as well but really one of the things I think about is trying to use this purple rock so that mm. it matches your existing aquascape. So uh, a lot of the stuff from Real Reef kind of has this like, you know, like used to look to it. It matches mm -hmm. the other rock that will be in your aquascape and those branches. If you're in like a SPS nut and, you know, you're just covered in SPS everywhere. Well, it might be kind of hard to actually get a bridge exactly. across because there's nowhere space for it but a little round branch that's just kind of sticking out of right here that comes up and then allows you to grow a whole new garden off of it. Totally different option. So bridges, branches, and even building little islands out into the, into the sand. Totally new places to add corals and expand on an existing aquascape. All right, number two, how long should it take me to set up my aquascape? And the answer is it varies, but also the results. <laughs> so one thing to keep in mind here is you could pile up the rocks inside of 10 minutes uh, and just kind of cantilever them together and hope that it all just holds together. Yep. Uh, but you can also build what is called an aquascape, which is something that is visually interesting. And keep in mind that for the first couple of years before the whole thing just coated in coral. That's all you get to see. <laughs> all you're gonna see is the aquascape. So when people come to your house and say, oh, that looks awesome, they're actually talking about the aquascape mm -hmm. in most yeah, cases. Yeah. So a little bit of effort up front, making sure that you build something really kind of cool and unique, will pay off not only how much you enjoy the tank, but actually how much everybody else that sees your tank enjoys it as well. Question number three, which applies directly to me, is what if I have the time, but I don't have the skill to make these elaborate looking aquascapes that are gorgeous? The answer is you can actually buy some fully made aquascapes. There's some people out there that are building these you know, custom aquascapes for people. Uh, other than that, there are pre-built ones, uh, like Carib Sea has the tree. There's some arches. There's some other unique, weird shapes that I can actually use my skills in stacking, but with unique shapes, it actually turns out pretty cool. I'd say Carib Sea is probably the beginner's friend in this case. Oh, yes. So if you are doing aquascape for your very first time, you want it to look awesome, you want it to have all of the caves and the openness and the negative space and the habitat and all the things, but this like really isn't your skill set and you don't want to spend weeks in doing it, Buying all those pre-made pieces that already is an arch, already is purple, already can stack together, uh, probably the best bet. You can actually find people that build entire aquascapes. Uh, I, th I think I've seen them on Instagram. Mm, yep. You can see them all over the place, but if you go out there, you can find them. They're kind of expensive to buy a totally done aquascape all completely finished. But the stopgap here is definitely the shapes from Carib Sea, which allows you to create archways and stuff so you're not just piling boulders. All right, question number four, big one of the day. <laughs> should I stack or should I use adhesive like epoxy or uh, super glue to hold the thing together? What if it just kind of seems like it's leveraged all together? What's the right answer? And the answer is absolutely use the adhesive, mm. use the epoxy, and in fact, not just to kind of hold them together just a little bit, 
Use it so you can form one solid piece in a smaller tank, or even two or three solid pieces in a larger tank. Pieces that you could pick out of the entire tank on their own mm -hmm. and put back in the exact way you took them out. All kinds of advantages. Yeah, this is one that we learned, uh, especially on the HNSAs when you were building the NSAs and the HNSAs. Is you know someday I'm going to have to move this thing. Your 360, we had to move, the, and there's three pieces of Aquascape put together. I will tell you this stacking of rock and the day that you have to arrange something or catch a fi uh, fish that's pesky or sick or something like that. When you have to rip all that stuff out and try to put it all back together with the corals in the same place as they were before, headache. Just make it one single or two single pieces. If you can say to yourself, I am never, ever, ever going to have to capture a fish and pull it out. <laughs> uh, I am never, ever, ever going to move. Yeah. Or any other number of reasons that like, I have to pull the scape out or redo some work here. Well, then just stack it, I guess. <laughs> but for a vast, vast majority of us, it's way, way better if you glue it all into one piece. And then like, if I need to get that tang out because it's bothering the other tangers, mm -hmm. outgrew the tank. Specifically, if you've gotten a tang as part of your utilitarian uh, cleanup crew, yeah, yep. you know you got it small, but you also know he's gonna outgrow it at some point in time. Well, catching it can be hard, unless I just grab it, pull the aquascape out, grab the fish, put the aquascape back in. If I want to move, I want to move down the street, I want to move across town, doesn't matter. Pull the aquascape with all the corals on it, put it into a bin of water, drive it to where we need to go, put it back in. <laughs> that done, you don't, it'll look the exact same way that when you had it before. You will never, ever, ever regret the time you took to use the adhesives, epoxy probably being my favorite on dry rock, super glue being my favorite on wet rock, super glue gel, but use it, create one aquascape, and you'll be really happy. Question number five, should the aquascape touch the back of the wall? These days, the answer is no. Uh, it's all about flow and getting some of that flow back behind the rock wall. You know, gone are the days where we used to stack a bunch of rock against the back because those become detritus traps on eating food. Maybe even a fish gets back there and, you know, perishes and you can't, you don't even know what's happening. But all of that places for, you know, these nitrate and phosphate factories to build up, you can eliminate by bringing the aquascape towards the, off of the back wall, right in the middle, and then adding flow behind there to keep all that stuff suspended and let your mechanical and uh, other filtration do the work. I think this is actually an artifact of the days of stacking. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't just stack rock uh, for the most part and have it not fall over unless it's resting mm -hmm. upon the back. So now that we're building more advanced aquascapes, we're creating more open area, which now the fish can actually go in front of and behind. So have all the benefits of keeping the pollution out and flushing all the detritus, it's better habitat. And you know what? It fits that new style of aquascaping, which is just more artistic and more cool. Cool. It has bigger open areas in it, and that is why we're no longer, in most cases, in fact, I don't think I'll ever do it again. No. Just don't stack in the back. All right, number six, we touched on this a little bit, but there's a deeper look. Which adhesive should I use for my rock? And the answer is uh, different ones for different solutions. So if you're doing dry rock uh, and you followed any of Randy's investigates, uh, then epoxy is your friend. Yes. Uh, epoxy is the thing that sticks to the dry rock. It molds around it. Uh, it does it quickly. It's fairly inexpensive and it holds onto it structurally the best. It is now what I use on any, any dry rock yep. uh, installation. Uh, so uh, if you're going to do it epoxy, sometimes I will glue it temporarily with some uh, super glue and some Instaset and then hit the, the epoxy behind it. Mm -hmm. However, if your rock is wet, uh, then definitely the epoxy sucks. Uh, <laughs> so the epoxy will just deteriorate when it gets wet and it's not a good solution. Yeah, Super yeah this was, the, that was a surprise when I found that uh, we had the rocks wet and I put some epoxy and mortar and super glue on them. And the only ones that held up through stress testing was that uh, super glue. And that's because of, you know, it, it actually hardens because of moisture. So it, it helps to uh, keep that bond and hold that bond together. Something that wet epoxy and wet mortar couldn't do. But for the budget conscious, there is an option as well too. And that's a lot of mortar. Yeah, so mortar, just as good as the epoxy, just a lot more sloppy mm -hmm. and a little harder to get into like a 
vertical surfaces yeah. and underneath overhangs and everything. So epoxy though, a lot cheaper, like a whole bucket of epoxy is absolutely a lot cheaper than a whole bucket or a whole bucket of mortar is a lot yep. cheaper than a whole bucket of epoxy <laughs> rather. Uh, so that is, if you're on a budget here and you want to do something really cool with your aquascape, mortar is definitely your friend. One of the cool things about mortar too, is you can take kind of this uh, rough edge surface of some of the uh, like Marco rocks, yep kind of smooth them out because it kind of fills in some of the holes and you can kind of create like arms and stuff with it. It's pretty cool. I will say one other thing about super glue though is underwater, mm. right? So, you know, wet, I could be doing super glue it to wet like really quickly out of the tank. I'm gonna use, you know, in this case, quite a bit because it's, it's, it's kind of about adhesive together, but also getting it into or and around molds that kind of hold on to the chunks as well. Uh, but underwater, do not buy this. Uh, so if you buy a big tube like this and you squeeze it underwater, when you let go, even just for a half a second, it sucks water back into the tube. Yeah, that's why uh, these little tubes, 20 gram tubes, and there's some other ones out there. Uh, when you squeeze on them, it doesn't have that back pressure back in, but I can make a ball under the water, smash it into the place where I need the aquascape to bond, and uh, I don't sacrifice the rest of my tube. I can continue using it. This is actually really easy to get into the nooks and crannies mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. It's a really small tube. You can actually just squirt it or right, 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 everywhere around it and then kind of mush it in there. It's clear, so uh, in most cases, it will hide in your aquascape. Aquascape, you can actually make it hide really well. So wet is super glue, budget, mortar, but my favorite, epoxy. Question number seven, for the newbies out there, this is your first aquascape and you're asking yourself, what color of rock should I use? I've got bone white options, dark purple options, lighter purple options. The answer here for uh, many of you is, go if you're gonna enjoy your tank the first couple years, get the purple stuff. It just looks established day one. It's almost like Insta-Tank. And then when you add corals, it looks like the tank's been up for years. And uh, actually a lot easier too when it comes to uh, growing some nuisance things on the bone white. I will say uh, it's pretty uh, generally true. If you're new, your patience level is near zero. <laughs> uh, and so in that case, the purple rock looks established day one. Mm -hmm. I often find this darker real reef stuff to actually look the most natural yep. uh, day one. Uh, and it will hide all kinds of things. So the white rock will show little green films, little red films, it'll mm -hmm. show Diatons, every last yeah. little bit of algae grown on it. And for experienced reefers, it's really not about where we're starting, it's about where we're going. And these tools offer different options like breaking it up and building really advanced aquascapes. This stuff stacks really well. Mm -hmm. Allows you to do a lot of different things, but if, if this is my first rodeo, it's all about, I want it to look as nice as it possibly yeah. can, as fast as it can, not show every last little misstep that I might have taken as a new reefer. Purple rock, real reef, probably the winner. Number eight, this one's changed over time. And the question is, should I cure my rock before I build the aquascape? And the answer is no. You should cure the aquascape not the rock. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, as we're building more of these, you know, uh, elaborate, more advanced aquascapes, you have the HNSAs, the NSAs, it's taking upwards uh, for you a week or even more to build a full scale uh, aquascape, in which case, you know, if you're worrying about I'm taking my rocks out and do I'm not losing bacteria that I had when it was curing and do I put it back in while it's going? And then that conversation that we had about epoxy and super glue and mortar, if you really want to build these uh, elaborate aquascapes, which a lot of us are, are doing these days, build the scape first, find a container large enough to house it and then cure the entire aquascape. Turns out you actually have one, it's called a tank. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> cure it in the aquarium, actually. So it used to be that we were cycling yeah. in bins. Like we would dump all the rock, we would put it all in a trash can, we'd add some bacteria, food source, and like let it soak for a couple of months. But the problem then is like when I want to aquascape it, I gotta keep it moist the entire time, yeah. which can be hard if you're gonna do something elaborate. Yeah. Uh, better yet, when you have all that rock, build the aquascape, put it in the tank, and let it cure right in the tank instead of in uh, the trash can. And that's true even if the tank is actually just sitting on the floor. Mm. It's a perfect place for that while you're getting the whole thing ready and set up. Just cure it in the tank and the aquascape, not the rock.
Question number nine, how do I keep my aquascape from tipping over? The thing of the past was you have rounded rocks with uh, round edges. You have to put a little piece of rock in so you can stabilize it. Uh, this has changed 100% over the last few years. And the answer is use foundation rock. This Marco rock was you know, cut specifically with a flat edge. It lays flat on your aquarium and then you build up off the top of that. But guess what you don't have is that you know, in the back of your mind, is this thing really stable or is my goby or shrimp pair going to knock my little piece out, roll my whole aquascape over? You know, the thing of the past you don't have to worry about anymore, use foundation. Foundation rock looks like it's also like erupting out of the bottom of the tank rather than just a boulder sitting on it. Yep. And these boulders are always just wobbly no matter what you do. This foundation rock is not. It's super machine, super flat. Uh, and also big long pieces like this uh, create a foot, uh, mm -hmm. like that lever you're talking about when I build out of here. I can build out and this weight will hold on here as long as the joint's really good. Use that epoxy or mm -hmm. mortar. So uh, again, for me, a, visually, it looks awesome because it's erupting out of the sand, uh, out of the bottom of your tank. It's super, super stable. Never worry about it falling over. I will not build an aquascape that doesn't have these. Even if I go for some of the purple rock, in almost every case, yes. I will still get some small foundation pieces to build it on top of because that is what's going to give it the most stability. Number 10, probably the most commonly missed question, who is this aquascape for? And the answer is, it's 33% for me. I mean, about one third of this is just because I want to look at it and yes. I want it to look awesome, right? Yep. I want my friends to come over and say, wow, isn't that cool? <laughs> uh, I also want uh, uh, it to be 33% for the fish and actually the coral. Yes. Uh, but it's a habitat for organisms that live in there. So that's an important thing. Think about this, what I'm building here is where these organisms are gonna live. The fish need swim throughs. They need areas where they can escape aggression. They need uh, little overhangs. They need different things for different types of fish. Uh, you can have lots of little holes for things like chromis to shoot in and out of. So think about it as a habitat and all the animals that rely on you will do better. It's also one more thing, one third for the flow. So having an aquascape, an epic aquascape, meaning I did this level 10, it has been done mm -hmm. uh, no better. If I hit the other two, I'm still probably about a six or seven. If I wanna hit a 10, it means that I built this thing for flow. It means that I don't have big detritus traps all over the place. I built it so flow can get it behind it. It can get in front of it. It can get over it. And when these things meet, it pushes the water through it. So. Thinking about flow, thinking about habitat, thinking about hey, making sure that everybody that comes over wants to give me that high five, <laughs> all of those things are the most important things in who you're building the aquascape for. Okay, the question we didn't answer today is how do I actually achieve all three of those things with an aquascape and the answer is our video on the yes. HNSA. You'll see every last tip here. You'll see actually how to create one of the coolest types of aquascapes out there, everything you need to know.